This video covers zero coupon bonds in the yield curve. Zero coupon bonds are some of the most actively traded bonds in the market, especially treasury zero coupon bonds that are created by stripping the principal payments from an individual treasury note or bond and trading those single cash flows in the secondary market. The thing that characterizes a zero coupon bond is there is one future cash flow, next period, or some number of periods from now. So the timeline for a zero coupon bond is actually very simple. That makes the pricing relationship very simple as well. Put down a timeline between now and some future date, call it in. There's some price today for the zero coupon bond that we would pay to buy it, and across the end periods, we will get paid whatever the face value or future value of that bond is. The interest rate that equates these two is the yield to maturity on this bond. But we know what that is. Discounting the future value back to today, or equivalently, carrying today's price forward for end periods, I need the end here, will tell us what the interest rate is. Using either one of these and finding the interest rate gives us the following relationship. I'll start with this one here. Divide both sides by P0. Now what I'll take, do is take the nth root. And then we'll just subtract one from both sides. This is the basic relationship that defines what are called zero coupon yields. So the two equivalent formulations are future value divided by one plus interest between now and the future date. Rearranging and selling, solving for the interest rate gives what's called the yield to maturity between now and the future date. Now, often, zero coupon yields are quoted as if they have six-month compounding. Often, they are quoted as if they have annual compounding. Which one we're doing, we'll just need to be clear about so you'll know what the convention in a particular example is. So, for example, suppose that there's a two-year risk-free zero coupon bond the 100,000 face value and an initial price of 96,618.36. So the timeline, if we have annual compounding, looks like this. We would pay 96,000 to receive 100,000 in two years. So the annual yield to maturity is the return that I get. Over the two years, we're going to uncompound it. And I'll just go ahead and do that on my calculator. 96, eight, um, sorry, 100,000 divided by 96,618.36 is 1.034. So over the two years, I get a 3.5% total return. Uncompounding it, take it to the root of 2, so 1 plus the annual return is 107, subtract 1 to get the return per year effective on this bond is 1.735%. Now, if it was semi-annual compounding, this would actually be four periods. The only difference would be
It's going to take this to the fourth root. Of course, that's the second root up there. So let's do that. So again, it's 100,000 divided by 96,618.36. And I'm going to take that now to the fourth root, 1 divided by 4, minus 1. So this is the periodic return. See, that's 8637%. But that's a return per six month period. When we're doing six month periods, we get an APR on this by multiplying by two. So that's 1.7275%. So this is the APR not taking into account the compounding that occurs over the course of the year implicitly. This is the APR assuming that there is one compounding period in a year. The standard convention is to use this version here, an APR with two compounding periods per year. Often in class, we'll make this annual just because it's one step simpler. Again, I'll notify you what the convention is every time so you'll know. So let's do this example again, supposing that you've forgotten the formula. Well, instead of remembering the formula, all you have to do is a little bit of algebra. You know the present value will grow into the future value at whatever return the investor is getting for the number of periods they hold the bond. Two. From there, you should be able to solve this pretty easily by dividing both sides by the investment today taking the square root of both sides in this case because n is 2 and then subtracting 1 from both sides. So we've reproduced the formula there without having remembered it from a little bit of algebra. Now, what you see most often quoted are the yields to maturity at different horizons. If we line up the yields to maturity at different horizons, we can use those to back out the price. Of course, in the market, they trade at a price, and that determines the yield. But what's quoted is the yield. That's what you see on the Treasury site. That's what you see on bonds online. That's what you see in the market. If we line up the interest rates at different points in time, we have what's called the zero coupon yield curve. This gives us a different discount rate that investors are demanding at each point in time. And often, the yield curve is the zero coupon Treasury yield curve. This is used to find the baseline discount rates for every horizon. If it's a corporate bond, we add a risk premium to that and again use a different discount rate at every horizon. Zero coupon bonds give us two of the methods we use to price coupon bonds. We can look at the prices of cash flows at each date and time directly by looking at zero coupon bond prices or we can look at the discount rates at every horizon by looking at the yield curve.